Hello, and welcome to the broadcast. Nothing Beast here with y'all, and uh, it's another day of some lawn mowing simulator. <laughs> I don't know why this game is as fun as it is. I don't understand it. I Even I look at it. I look when I'm editing my videos and everything, I look back at it and I'm just like, why am I doing this game? It's fun. That's why. <laughs> Hope you're all having a great evening. Um, I had uh, a pretty easy going day today. Um, I watched uh, a little bit. I didn't get a lot of it, but I watched a little bit of the uh, the Dead by Daylight uh, six year anniversary uh, broadcast. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't see it live. I just, uh, the time difference and everything, I think it happened like well before. I didn't even know about it. I just saw, uh, went on, uh, online and everybody was talking about it and I'm just like, oh, okay, well, let me see if I can still find it. So I watched a little bit of it, uh, saw a little, just a very little, uh, information about the new killer, which I don't know. He's an ugly looking dude, but this will be, it's an interesting, the reason why I'm talking about it is uh, I, I play a lot of Dead by Daylight. The problem that I have with Dead by Daylight is the time that I broadcast, that's when all the assholes get on. <laughs> and it's just hard to get decent matches uh, because everybody's with their uh, teams, everybody's on voice chat, everybody's got their edges and everything, and it's just, it's not fun. I play early in the day. Um... So yeah, I'd like to broadcast it, but I don't know. We'll see. I haven't. I have a fun idea in mind, but I'm working on it anyway. Um, so uh, watching the new killer and everything, it's uh, th I'm in an interesting position this time around for the new killer to be released because the new killer is not a premium killer. It's uh, just a standard killer in the game, which means that you can buy it with in-game currency, and I've got plenty sitting in the bank waiting for that to happen. But the, the other side of that is, I am, I have all the other standard killers. So it's not like I'm saving up for another character, or I'm not sure which one to spend it on. This is the first time where I'm like, I have the money, and I don't have any other, because I'm a killer main, I don't have any other killers that I need to buy with my in-game currency. I, I still have a couple of premium killers that I haven't uh, purchased, but you you have to buy you have to buy them with actual money. So, <laughs> so when this one launches, I think it's supposed to be June seventh, but it'll be the eighth for me because I'm a day ahead of everybody else. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to uh, <clears throat> see that when when the killer goes on sale, buying it immediately. That'll be the first time that I've actually done that, and uh, uh, so hopefully I'll have enough. Um, uh, enough uh, experience points and blood points to be able to spend and level it up to the point that I can get some practice while everyone else, uh, before everybody's gotten sick of the character. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, I got the lawn mode for like the last time before the fall season really kicks in. Um, it's weird uh, thinking of May as uh, the beginning of fall. Still weird. Uh, the temperature is cooling off. It was windy as hell. Uh, the grass is not growing nearly as fast as it was. So I was like, just mow it one more time. It'll probably be the last time I have to mow it for at least a couple of months. Just get it done. I have a day off from work. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically... That was my day. Um, yeah, that was it. Got a nap, and that was it. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, switch things over to the official broadcast here. And uh, when we last left off, I thought that I was ready to buy a second lawnmower and hire my first employee, but I'm not quite there yet. One more job, I think I ought to be ready to do so. So we're going to go in here and uh, see, take a look at what jobs that we have. Uh, 265, 405, 635, that'll probably be the job. 430 and 305. Okay, so let's just take the biggest job available. <clears throat> uh, requires mulcher or collector. <clears throat> well, I have a mulcher. Uh, the vehicle you have selected... Okay, uh, well, they're asking for 130. Mine's 132. My God, two centimeters? I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to handle the job. 
sometimes this game. I mean, I know it's it's just it's just warning me that I'm not within the parameters, but I'm two uh, two centimeters over. I don't think anybody in the world has ever complained about having two centimeters more than they were expecting. Ladies. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, hope you all have had a uh, decent day, or if it's, uh, depending on your time zone, an, a good start to the day, a good end to the day. I, um, I've got watchers from different time zones, and uh, that's one thing I love about uh, this uh, online streaming. I'm not in anybody's specific uh, time zone bracket. Oh, look at that. It's an at that turns into a uh, hashtag. Isn't that cute? <clears throat> All right, five to six centimeters. All right, let's let's pick stuff up. We got five things to pick up. La 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 la. Oh, there's one. Another one. Sometimes just, oh, there's another one. Sometimes looking at a distance, you can catch them because they're more solid than the grass. And the, the, the grass will only load a certain distance away <laughs> in this game. Oh, I think there we go. <clears throat> hey, hey, to Brett. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Hey, 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 hey. It's bad, Albert. <laughs> you know, I would... Oops. I, I'm i going to grab this and do just a little bit of edging before we get started. You know, I was... Uh, that was not my... That was not my demographic. Or, or rather, not, not my demographic, but my age group. Uh, Fat Albert was before my time, but I did see some reruns. I don't think it was that great of a cartoon. Uh, it's just one of those things that makes me think that the 70s were a really rotten time for kids. Fat Albert being like the greatest cartoon ever. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm sure it's fine, but I was more of a uh, Rocco's Modern Life sort of kid. <clears throat> What is our mowing height? Uh, five to six. There we go. 5.7 is the best we can do for that one. All right. Now this one's a pain in the ass because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, chance to hit the walls. You get a lot of collision, collision damage, or uh, uh, penalties. Heck, there are times where I'm like, I don't think I hit anything, and I'll still come away with a couple of dollars of collision. Now, why did that happen? <laughs> Spunky! <laughs> Heifer Wolf was such a great character on that show, Rocco's Modern Life. Garbage day is a very dangerous day. <laughs> Fun fact, the, uh, the, the, char the guy who did the voice of Rocco was also the voice of the Taco Bell dog in those 90s ads. Um, he was Carlos Alazraki. I, I think I'm saying that name right. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard that name spoken aloud. Yeah, come on, hit, let's go. <laughs> Carlos Ellis Rocky. Um, he was one of the uh, cops on Reno 911. If you ever watched that show, I love Reno 911. But yeah, he did uh, the voice of Rocco and uh, the Taco Bell dog. Uh, I think he's still doing voice work to this day, but I'm not exactly sure. 
Boy, I tell you, that Rocco's Modern Life, there were a couple of episodes that I was, uh, you know, a teenager when that show came out, and there were a couple of episodes I was like, how the hell did this get past the censors? There was an episode where uh, Rocco wanted to go uh, reconnect with his family, and his family were uh, cattle ranchers. So Heppard invited himself to go along, you know, to support his friend when he's uh, heading up to meet up with his family. And uh, when he shows up, uh, Hepper wasn't allowed in the house. And uh, uh, Rocco's uh, family was like, cows sleep out in the barn. And uh, Rocco's like, oh, I'm sorry, Hep. <laughs> and uh, Hepper is like, no, 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 it's okay. Uh, this is what I want, to get back to my roots. So he goes out into the field and all the cows are standing in a row. So he goes to stand up and, you know, next to one, falls asleep, and he ends up falling over, tipping everybody over, you know, cow tipping. So all the cows are all mad at him, so he's like, oh, I think I'll go sleep in the barn. So the next morning, uh, one of Rocco's uh, cousins or family, I don't remember how they were related, but um, he gets up, sees that Heifer is still asleep, and uh, he gets this grin on his face and walks up and hooks him up to the milking machine. Now, for those who aren't certain, Heifer is a male steer. Now, a male steer being hooked up to a milking machine. They, and they don't just cut away. It's Heifer's asleep and you hear this quack. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then his eyes turn into stars and he passes out. And I was like, how the hell did that get past the censors? Because it, it, they, 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 they cut it out for the rest of the viewings, but the first couple of times it, it aired, the censors weren't aware of it. I don't, I don't know how the hell they got away with that. It was one of the dirtiest jokes. I had seen on a Nickelodeon cartoon that wasn't uh, Ren and Stimpy. How Ren and Stimpy existed, uh, you know, with everything that goes on on that show, I don't know. But but Rocco's Modern Life typically wasn't one that pushed the envelope, and I think that's how they got away with it. But although the more you watch the early episodes, the more you're again still how did this how did this take so long for someone to catch Rocco's favorite place to eat was a restaurant called Chokey Chicken. Chokey Chicken. Eventually they caught on and they changed it to Chewy Chicken. But for the longest time, you could see people going to the restaurant with a giant spinning chicken and it literally said Chokey Chicken. They referenced it. They said it aloud. I don't know, man. The 90s were wild. And uh, there was, while I'm thinking of all these dirty jokes, there was another one. And I've talked about this one before, but um, there was another cartoon, Cow and Chicken. And that was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Back when the uh, in the 90s when Hanna-Barbera was putting out these really weird and edgy attitude uh attitude-laden cartoons. Cow and Chicken was just a weird show. Um, the show's intro, the lyrics were, uh, Mom had a chicken. Mom had a cow. Dad was so happy, he didn't care how. And I, those were the lyrics of the show. But anyway, there was an episode, and I never saw it aired, but I know it existed because I saw it. I saw a video of it. The censors, it ran once, and the censors jumped all over it. It was, uh, there was this biker gang that came to town, and they were all women. And they were women of a very specific stereotype. Don't make me say what kind of stereotype. But their favorite activity, the leader said, our favorite thing to do is to run into town and chew on everybody's carpet. And then they cut to the gals on the floor chewing up the carpet. And I'm like, come on, how, how hard do you have to hit the nail on the head before somebody recognizes this? 
And uh, like I said, I never saw it when it aired because I wasn't I wasn't a big fan of Cow and Chicken. I got to that show kind of late. But after watching it all, I was like, how? How did we? Was with the ninety censors just not paying any attention? Not that I'm in favor of censorship or anything. It's just how did this get past it all? <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, man, the 90s cartoons were a wild scene. Most of the time... <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Um, because, because I remember very vividly the... Uh, 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 the, the, um, damn it, uh, Senate and, uh, the government getting involved and complaining about video game violence when it came to games like Doom, Mortal Kombat. Joseph Lieberman was one of the first names that I learned to despise being a fan of video games. So, I, it's not that they weren't so soft, they were just harder on other things. Well, but who made that decision? You know, just be, you know, there's there's this whole thing where it's like we can't do this. Well, who says? You know, I don't know the origins of that, so I really can't speak to that. But the the, the big difference between the big difference between the '90s and now is. Nowadays, it's a lot easier to rally idiots online. You couldn't do that in the 90s, you know? So it's a lot easier to do that. So it feels, I, I, I'm a big believer that it feels a lot more restrictive. But really, I, 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 don't, believe, I don't believe that it is. You know, there's, there's a lot of people who are all like, oh, well, we're not allowed to do this. We're not allowed to do that. Who says? You know, someone complains about it. So the fuck what? Do it. You know? Oh, well, we can't tell that joke. It might hurt somebody's feelings. I don't agree. Who's, where does it say that your feelings are protected? You know? I'm, I'm, but I'm an old school believer of if you don't like something, change the channel. I grew up in an era where I only had like five channels before cable got big in the 90s, and if there was something on TV I didn't want to watch, I didn't watch it. I didn't write letters to make sure nobody else could watch it. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I just think that I just think that 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 right there is is a big difference there. You know, when when you when you go online, you can rally people, but most of the people that you're rallying are just armchair keyboard warriors. And honestly, I don't think that... Oh, oh dear, my controller batteries died. Hang on one second. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's just the outrage culture, and that's, that's what the social media has given people to do. They, what they can do is, you know, when, when you were somebody in the 90s and you had a problem, you could only talk to the people who were right next to you. You know, so when you talk to your friends and family members, they're like, oh boy, that Mortal Kombat is a terrible game. Well, why? Because it is. 
Well, why is it terrible? Because it's so violent. Okay, well, what's violent about it? Well, you can kill your opponents. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger kills a bunch of people in his movies. Do you want Arnold Schwarzenegger to be censored? Well, no, but that's different. You're not the one who's actually killing him. Okay, that's not really an argument. So, you know, that person had to have a conversation right in front of you. Whereas, you know, now you just... You find your, your cult, you find your group online, and then your your thoughts are validated because you've already found your little square uh, of like-minded people on Twitter or you know Facebook or whatever. I think that I think that makes a big difference. You know, when when people are validated because they can find the uh, you know the groups who think the same way that they do. I think that I think that makes a big difference. And that doesn't mean that they're more right. It just means that they have people who can slap them on the back and say, yeah, I, I agree with you. Going back to your comment, you know, Baba, you know, not being able to sing Baba Black Sheep. Okay, well, some sensitive person. I don't know the history, so I, like I said, I can't really speak about that. I don't know if there's, you know, some story that came out because of it, or you know, if it has, uh, you know, historical connotations. But so what? Kids don't want to sing that song. They want to sing Baby Shark, do 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 do, or that's that's just my baby doggy. Whatever the hell the new song of the moment is. <laughs> when I was a kid, I sang Bobby McFerrin songs. <laughs> My parents hated it. Is that uh, "Don't Worry, Be Happy"? Let me tell you something, if somebody wanted to make a big federal case about Bobby McFerrin, it would have been my parents. They just didn't have the online group to complain with. <laughs> uh, no. I just, sometimes I think people get, re I think people get hung up on both sides, both sides of that whole thing. You know, there's, there's the people who are, you know, looking for something to be outraged over, and then there's the people who you know, want to counterculture that whole thing by, you know, acting like they're the ones who are in control or something. And it's like, they're not. You know, like, you know, the, the, the big word, the big one is all, you know, cancel culture and everything. I'm just like, yeah, but how many things that went out to be canceled remain canceled? You know? Oh, we had to cancel Dave Chappelle because we misheard what he said about, uh, you know, trans people or whatever that controversy was. I don't know. when the who, How the hell did he have a show when he got attacked a couple of weeks ago? I thought he was canceled. You know? That's, and, and to me, that's, that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, didn't Ted Nugent get canceled? Why is he still doing fucking concerts? Because there's fucking idiots who will listen to his garbage goddamn music. And his stupid fucking hillbilly, inbred, dickhead, drug-addled brain thoughts. I'm not a fan of, uh, <laughs> of Ted Nugent, if you couldn't tell. But I don't want him banned. I think he's a fucking idiot. And, all, you know, if someone is all like, I love Ted Nugent, I think Ted Nugent's a fucking brilliant genius. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go somewhere else, somewhere where, you're, where I'm not surrounded by gift shit or anything. You know, sometimes, sometimes you gotta use people's ability to just wear their shit on the sleeve as, you know, um, as as you know, kind of a courtesy. You know, when I where, when I was back living in the states, if I passed by somebody who had the uh, "Don't Tread on Me" flag or a um, 
uh, or a uh, Confederate Confederate flag, I didn't waste my time getting to know you. I was like, you're an idiot. There's, you're a complete, you know, dipshit. You don't have a fucking clue, and I'm not going to waste my time trying to convince you otherwise. You know, so, and trust me, where I came from, there were a lot of all of those flags. You know, someone who's got fucking shit for brains, and thinks and thinks that they're, you know. Uh, thinks that they have all the answers. That's just, that's just how I look at it. You know, like I said, you know, a lot of people want to ban, you know, uh, the Confederate flag and everything like that. Let me tell you, you take down the monuments and everything, but if someone's dumb enough to fly a Confederate flag, that's all it does. It just tells me you're not going to have a, you're not going to have a, you know, a decent conversation with this person. Don't waste your time. But a lot of a lot of people, I just feel it's like it's all it's all their it's it's all this incessant need to be counterculture, you know. Like like someone says, you can't fly that flag. Well, I'm gonna fly that flag. It's just you know that's unfortunately that's kind of human nature. The surest way to get somebody to do something is to tell them you can't do that, and not have a and and, and not have a good reason to back it up. Like um, you know, all these uh, all these you know banned books in conservative states. You know they want to ban all these books in the libraries. Well, let me tell you something. The surest way to get somebody to read a book is to ban the damn thing. But to me, the uh, you know just just to see how clueless the people who want to ban the books are. They're still burning books in the digital age. It's like, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong, seeing a book burning, you know, hurts my heart, but at the same time, I'm like, you do realize that a kid can just download the fucking PDF file and read this thing on their phone, right? <laughs> and, and to me, that's kind of, that's kind of, you know, the just the epitome of the stupidity of that movement. We're going to burn books. Okay, everything's online, you know that, right? We're still going to burn books. Okay. Are the, are the printing presses still working? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, enjoy your bonfire and looking like a fucking idiot. While you do this on, you know, <laughs> in front of cameras, thinking that you're right, which is you know, making a note of all your faces. I also think it's, uh, I think it's hilarious how, you know, out of all of history, the book burning, you know, has always been on one side of history. But the people doing it today think that they're on the right side. It's like, God, you people are fucking stupid. Scared to death that your kids are going to learn about the menstrual cycle or something. <laughs> oh, we can't watch Turning Red on Disney Plus. They're grooming our children by teaching teenagers what maxi pads are. Oh, the horror. Which, by the way, I thought Turning Red was an adorable movie, and I loved it. I thought it was very fun. Knowing that conservatives' heads were exploding because of it um, was just kind of an added bonus. It's like, and we're the fucking snowflakes? <laughs> All right, well, uh, you can go ahead and call me whatever you want, but I'm not the one calling Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to figure out how we can get this movie stopped. I'm also not screwing over the state of Florida by <laughs> making the taxpayers have to pick up Disney's slack that you've now taken away from them to punish them. <laughs> I don't know. 
I, I, I guess, I guess a lot of my philosophy and you know, uh, everything comes from uh, George Carlin and his uh, reminder that it's important to not give a shit about anything. You know, it's like, uh, you know, like, like patriotism. I don't give a shit. You know, I was born in America. Why does that make it? Why does that make me have to fucking worship the goddamn flag? You know, yeah, I was born here, and the first chance I had to uh, to move out of the country, I did. Uh, why did I do that? Because you know, America is this thing that's supposed to be the greatest country in the world, and there's very little that it does better than any other country in the world. It can't take care of its people with health care. It can't take care of its infant mortality rate. Hell, uh, the infrastructure alone is fucking crumbling and terrible at times. You know, it's like, what part of me worshipping a country that doesn't actually prove, uh, you know, through its actions, that is worthy? That's, that's, to me, that's, to me, what it should be. I, I shouldn't worship something because I'm told that's what I'm supposed to do. And to me, that's unfortunately what too much patriotism is all about. It's not, I love my country. To me, patriotism is supposed to be, I love my country and I want it to be the best. Not, I love my country and there's not a goddamn thing wrong with it. That's not patriotism, that's indoctrination. I and mean, I just, I can't get behind that. You know, when I see, you know, and I'm going kind of old school with this one, but when I see, uh, when I see people get mad at football players kneeling during the national anthem, and they're more angry at that than they are, oh, let's do, let's see what our time was, 29 minutes, so we beat it by almost, well, a little more than, a little more than five minutes, that's not too bad. Um, but when I see people get more angry at a football player kneeling during the national anthem, which there is no law that says we have to stand for it, more angry than that, than the reason why the person was kneeling, which is, you know, police brutality against minorities and people of color, you know, to me, I'm like, boy, this, this is just kind of completely off the rails. Well, you should be forced to stand for that flag. Okay, so now you're in favor of totalitarianism and... Uh, you know, and communism and, and you know, dictatorship. Because that's not freedom. You know, and then and then the, the, the NFL teams were all like, well, we're going to make our players stand for that or you're going to stay in the locker room. Fine, we're going to stay in the locker room then. That's now the protest. It's like, you know, I know you're a business and that's, whoops. Well, that was weird. It exited me back out to the main menu. All right, so how did we do on that one? Uh, total, let's see, penalties and fines, collisions, $7.28. But our cutting time bonus took care of that alone. Uh, so we ended up with uh, $30.51 more than we were supposed to. $6.15 and $6.45. Very nice. So, but to me, that's... that's that's the bottom line is, um, you know, and it's one of the reasons why I left the country because I couldn't afford to go to the doctor. Um, I was tired of seeing school shootings and nothing happened about it, you know, uh, when Sandy Hook happened and nothing changed in any direction. I was like, I, 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 I was like, I don't want to raise a child here. And then, um, you know, I, I had, uh, when, I, when I was deciding whether I was going to leave the country or not, I had a pro and con list. And one of the biggest, you know, pro leave was the fact that every single time that I had to go to the doctor, it cost me thousands of dollars, regardless of the fact that me and my wife were paying $400 a month back then for insurance. It's like, when does this insurance come into play? I'm paying $400 a month. And I've got a $5,000 deductible. It's like, for Christ's sake, you know? The only thing that this is going to save me from is when I'm in a fucking car crash. And it's like, I need regular, you know, health checks. I need to go to the doctor and it not cost me $35 just to sit in the waiting room. You know, so it's like, you know, health care. 
you know, kids being shot in schools and no one giving a shit about it, or, or at least no one with the, the ability to do something about it, you know. But to me, you know, the, the, the idea of patriotism was, I, I love this country. This country is my home. When does it love me back? And it wasn't. So I was like, okay, then then I'm then I don't belong here. That to me is I'm not going to be one of these persons who says patriotism is I never say a ne a negative thing about my country. And I'm like, no, patriotism is I love my country and I want it to be better. I see a problem, I don't want, you know, but there's there's just too many people I feel that say, you know, America is perfect the way it is and it ain't. It ain't even close. You know, but you can't talk to these people. It's like my own family. I would talk about, um, I would, I would try to talk about, oh, good. We can go ahead and buy some new equipment. Uh, let's see. That's 80, 84. That's a collector. Uh, let's just buy a cheap one just to get <clears throat> another one in. And, uh, let's go to the equipment garage and, okay, uh, 250. Okay. Uh, all right, so now we've got a full accoutrement of secondary uh, equipment, um, but we are down to fifty-four dollars. <laughs> so uh, we probably should go ahead and do another job. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at some of our applicants. We have Elsie Ross, Samuel Bolton, Albert Howell, Ivy Thompson, and Margot Willis. Why do those all sound like? Uh, uh, 80s uh, 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 movie stars <laughs> or or TV uh, characters. Uh, but anyway, and I don't mean to I don't mean to go all political or anything like that. It's just that just happened to be the topic, and you know there's a lot of that going on. But but again, it's it's like you know when when my own family members I couldn't even talk to them about what I liked about Australia because everything they just took as a personal attack. You know I would talk about you know, when I came down here for a visit, I would talk about, you know, I love the train system. The fact that I can walk 20 minutes from where I was at to go to a train station, walk there, and then that train can take me basically anywhere within the city of Sydney that I wanted to go, or get me, you know, within a couple of walking blocks of the city. You know, I, I just, I love that. And I couldn't even talk about public transportation and how well it was, uh, uh, how easy it was to use. Well, it's like that. It's like that in Chicago. Okay, well, it ain't like that in Kansas where I live. So what's your po what's your fucking point? Yeah, Chicago has a train system. So what? New York has a train system. So what? I don't live there. So it's like, you know, it, it would become a fight. And I just got to the point where it's like, can you not just be fucking happy for me? I'm about to go on an adventure here. I'm about to move to another country on a permanent basis. And, you know... It, it, it was because of that indoctrinated, you know, you can't say anything against America because uh, you're attacking the country that I love. And it's like, no, you don't love America. You are, you are, are obsessed. You are indoctrinated. You are, um, you know, it's, it's like, it's like an abusive relationship. You know, I love him even though he beats me every single night because he treats me right. No, no, he really doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, there's, there's so many, there's so many ri ridiculous things that, um, that happen. And, you know, it's, uh, you just, you just you look at it on face value and you wonder, you know, is it ever going to get any better? And to be perfectly honest, that's why I left. I was like, I'm tired of, in my lifetime, all of these, you know, systems failing. You know, insurance, you know, keeping our kids safe at school. The fact that we can't keep kids safe at school. The fact that we can't stop these mass shootings. You know, it's just, okay, fine, I'm going to a country that did. You can bitch about gun control all you want. I'm living in, in the middle of the whole damn thing, and I'm perfectly fucking fine. You have no idea the type of stress that I felt release when I was here. And on day number three, I just was able to sit in the, on the train and just relax. And it took me a while to realize the fact is there is almost zero chance that somebody on this train has a gun. 
back where I lived, you couldn't go to the fucking hardware store at two in the afternoon on a Sunday without somebody having to bring their holster. It's like, really? You can't go to the goddamn store to buy paint without packing? Which one between the two of us is the scared one here? You know, I know, I know. Oh, I'm the big ass bad gun owner and everything, and I'm going to, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking my iron to town for all the bad people to see. And I'm like, no, you're fucking scared to death. I, without a weapon on my body, am not as afraid of life as you are. You can't buy paint without feeling like you need to protect yourself. You're terrified. I want to see a change. That's, that was that was one of the bigger breaking points for me. I was just like, you know, but when I came to Sydney and everything and, and you know, I know the, and I knew what the gun laws were, which, by the way, it's not impossible to get a gun. You can still get firearms. It's just a lot tougher. But sitting on the train and just that that idea that nobody has a gun on this train that it's so even if even if they do it's such a minimal chance was able to you know just release stress in such a way that i i you know it's just one of those things that you just carry around as an american and you don't realize you are until you get out of the system and everything but it took me three days before i realized all that and you know let me tell you i i sleep very well i used to be a bundle of fucking nerves back in my own hometown anyway all right, let's let's just hire us an apprentice, Samuel Bolton or Margot Willis. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, oh! We have a brief little description. Margot Willis loves watching old monster movies. Okay, that's a plus. Watches an '80s action film every night. Suffers from arachibutyrophobia. I have no idea what that. What is that? A flaming spider fear. Once ate pizza every day for a year. I kind of like that. All right, let's see what uh, Samuel Bolton is. Likes the smell of fresh tarmac. Has been home by... Has to be home by midnight. Okay, that won't be a problem with this job. Refuses to listen to any popular music. Doesn't know what a Pokemon is. Sorry, Samuel, you just lost out. Doesn't know what a Pokemon is. Come on. <laughs> what is it? How old is Pokemon at this point? Came out in like 90... Was it 98 that it officially hit? I know I was, I know I was late through high school when it came out. So what is that? 22, 23, 24. So almost a quarter century and you don't know what a Pokemon is? Anyway. All right. Hire Margot Willis. She has a weekly salary of 250 bucks. All right. So now we can do two jobs, I think. Holy crap, 2,100. Oh, that's the orchard. Oh, God, I hate doing that one. It's a big payday, but that one's going to take a long time. Uh, Parkland, Weaver Square. Uh, I, think I'll, I think I'll take care of that one. Uh, recommended 140. And I'll take the uh, good equipment. Confirm that. And... Let's give her an easy job to start things off. Oh, they're all pretty complex. Actually, no. Let's give her the difficult job because I don't have to struggle it. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's give her the big old difficult job. What's the worst that happens? She gets a bunch of penalties and we don't get the full paycheck. All right. Exciting, exciting. We have a, a, a new uh, employee. <laughs> After the political talk show. You know, but that's, you know, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, no matter what I, whatever I think politi politically, I want people to be able to prosper. I want people to be safe. I want people to feel like they can chase their dreams. I want people to feel like, you know, if they want to do, you know, a job, I want them to be able to be paid for that job and to be paid a living wage. You know, I don't believe in a lot of controversy or anything. I just, you know, it's very basic. I think that I think that people should be able to be uh, to go to a doctor when they're sick and it not have to take away their vacation fund. You know, that that that, that those are my beliefs. 
I think that I think that it's the government's job to take care of people. You know, I don't give a shit if you don't like welfare. I think the most vulnerable of us should be taken care of, not the richest fuckers who make all the goddamn money. Elon and fucking uh, you know Musk and and uh, shit, I can't think of his damn name right at the moment now. Um, but uh, both of those fuck. Elon Musk, pay your goddamn taxes. I'm fucking tired of you getting all the goddamn tax breaks so that you can go play Spaceman all the goddamn time. Pay your fucking taxes. Pay your fucking employees. Sorry if that's a hot take. <laughs> all right, let's. You know, I this this is a uh, this is a uh, area that I have never actually mowed. But I have done uh, cleanup. Uh, later on in the game, you start getting uh, trash cleanup uh, jobs, and this is one that I do a lot, I, I, or I did a lot. So, but I've never actually, I've, I've never actually mowed this job. Oh come on! The trash is right next to a bin. Something, and there's a stick. All right. Now this one's a little compli uh, complicated, but uh, it's mostly open space. So we'll just uh, take it section by section. But yeah, at the, at the end of the day, I just, I want people to be able to, you know, oh, shoot. Did I have the uh, right cutting size? Uh, five, five point five. Wait, five point five between six. Oh, oh, okay. Let's go back. Take care of all of that. At the end of the day, that's all I want. I want people to be able to, you know, be able to go to work, take care of their families, and not have to be you know, bankrupted if something bad happens. You can call that whatever the hell you want, but that's that's what I want. I, you know, Republican, Democrat, I don't care who you voted for. I think I think that's like I said, I think that's the job of the government. If the job of the government is not to take care of the people, then what the fuck job does it have? Somebody answer that for me, please. I, I really want to know, what is their job if not to take care of the people who live there? And go, go ahead and call me a communist. I know <laughs> I actually have a better idea of what communism and socialism is anyway. I don't think that, you know, I think a governor who lets the power go out in their state is a failed governor. Abbott. You know, I think, I think, I, I literally think that somebody who can't uh, keep the fucking power on in their state because of their own decisions should not be running the goddamn state. You know, like I said, I keep throwing out these hot takes that I don't believe are hot takes. I think a, I think you know, a, a, a political, uh, someone who is voted into office, who is more, uh, who gives, a, who cares more about their Instagram followers and you know what kind of controversy they can get online. I think somebody who cares more about that than doing the damn job is unfit for office. I think, I think politicians who flee to Cancun in the middle of a winter snowstorm in their own state and then blames it on their children is a piece of shit. I don't care your policy at that point. You abandon your constituents. And then, you know, in, in, in a winter storm that kills women, children, and the elderly and then dares to call yourself pro-life. 
Hot take continues. And anyone who thinks that Hunter Biden's laptop is a more important issue than the uh, people who stormed the Capitol trying to overthrow an election that the, their guy didn't win, I think is a fucking idiot. Hot take. <laughs> and all this going on, I'll go ahead and say it. I'm not a Democrat. I think the Democrats are the most spineless, fucking useless pieces of shit that I've ever seen. Even when they're in charge of shit, they don't, they can't get shit done. So there, there you go, fair and balanced. But, which side's freaking out because we can't call Mr. Potato Head a mister anymore? I mean, why is that something that even matters? Who cares? It's a children's toy. Does a potato have a penis? No, and even if it did, that's no longer a mister anymore. <laughs> Scientifically, a potato is genderless. Because <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. For everybody who made a big deal about them taking the mister off of Potato Head, I had one when I was a kid in the 80s. Still came with the female parts, <laughs> you know, the lipstick and the and the uh, high heels all came with all of that. <laughs> My Mr. Potato Head could have a mustache and drive a car, <laughs> or <laughs> uh, uh, wear a, a nice frilly fe uh, flowered cap. I don't remember anyone pissing and moaning about it back then. Mr. Potato Head could, uh, you know, came with the cloak so he could dress in drag. No one even said something. You know why? Because nobody on social media told them to think that. They had to come up with it on their own. And most people were too busy to think stupidity like that. So I guess that brings me full circle with the uh, outrage culture and everything. And how social media is just, you know, just a poison in that way. You know, oh, I never thought about that on my own. Okay, is it something worth thinking about now? Well, I'm worried about, I'm worried about this topic that in no way makes any bearing on my life whatsoever. Why? <laughs> Again, George Carlin, don't give a shit. I don't remember if that was the name of one of his shows or something, but the importance of not giving a shit. All right, this square is, or this uh, kidney is done. Let's move on to the next kidney. You know, and, and um, I'll just go ahead and continue, you know, continue talking about this because fuck it, no one's watching anyway. Um, you know, where I'm at, it's not perfect. I just see it as better. And you know, that, that's what a lot of people are. You know, a lot of people get confused on. I'm not saying that it's perfect here. It doesn't have to be perfect. But when something doesn't work, it it should be fixed. Trust me, there's plenty of issues I have in this country. But at the end of the day, you know, and I, I talk to a lot of Aussies who have, you know, some negative things to say. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm Yakov Smirnov, you know, who used to live in Soviet Russia and then came to America. You know, it's like, you know, but the country. 
and all that. You know, that's how I feel about Australia. I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, in in uh, in Australia, you have uh, vicious snakes. In America, we have no health care. You know, and that's and that's what I feel like. I feel like I feel like I'm that Yakov Smirnov. You know, it, you know, when people are talking about, oh, I can't afford this and this and that and that, and I'm just like, yeah. Well, where I came from, the uh, minimum wage was seven and a quarter, and as far as I know, it still is. And they just look at me like, really? And I was like, yeah, I've worked in, you know, at a job for 14 years, and the best I ever got up to was 10 bucks an hour. Every time I went in for a review and asked them for more money, well, we just don't have it in the budget. Really? 14 years of employment here and ten dollars an hour is the best you're ever going to do for me? All right, time to find something else. Um, you know, big, a big issue here in Australia, just for the sake of fairness, uh, the housing. Housing is ridiculously expensive. I found myself in a fortunate situation to be uh, able to have gotten a decent house in a really nice area. But that was due to some, you know, uh, very smart investments and capitalizing on, uh, you know, family inheritances and everything. You know, so I'm not saying that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm never, I'm never one to say that I was a self-made man or anything that stupid. You know, but looking at the issues, oops, destroy the flower. Looking at the issues and things that are known here in Australia, you know, to me it was very important to lock down housing. Well, I'm just I'm doing terrible on this bed. It was important to lock down housing, and then after that, everything else kind of falls in line. Because in in the states, it was yes, I can afford to buy uh, you know a decent sized house. I lived in a you know small farming. And there were some, you know, some decently priced houses. And the banks, uh, I had built up a reputation with them and were able to get uh, some home, home loans and everything. But what I was paying for in a mortgage and insurance and car payments was just basically making sure that I had no real money at the end of the month. Whereas here, maybe where I'm living at right now is not the best for public transportation, but it still exists. Uh, if I had to get to places where I'm at right now, I could get to a few places uh, without a car. You know, I've got the bus systems, I've got the train systems. They may not be as good where I'm living now than they were uh, as they were uh, in Sydney. But they're still, but they're still there. Uh, I'm working on trying to find a cheap car, but uh, you know that's that's kind of you know just some of the issues. But the housing, I got that locked down. But at the end of the month, I don't have to pay for insurance. I can go to the doctor right now. It ain't gonna cost me anything. So that's one less thing. Yeah, again. The housing is an issue, and you know, trying to follow the politics and try to vote for the parties that are working on trying to make it easier for younger people to be able to buy housing and not live in apartments their entire lives. But that's that's an issue here. Again, it's not perfect, but in all the in all the ways that I wanted life to be better, it is. There's part of me that wonders if in my lifetime I will see America actually embrace uh, universal health care. I, I don't think, I don't, the way things are going, unless there's a major change, I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. And it's unfortunate that 
you know, like I said, the government's job to what I believe is to take care of the, you know, the most vulnerable in society. I just, I, I don't think this is ever going to see that point. And as someone who is a patriot, a true patriot, and someone who loves the country, I hate seeing it fall the way it is, and failing the way it is. But unfortunately, that's not what patriotism is anymore. Patriotism just isn't, you know, loving the country and wanting it to do better. It's, it's never questioning uh, your uh, country and wearing flag pins. I'm going to drive a truck with 27 flags on it, and that means I'm more patriotic than you. It's a competition. It's all for show anymore. I love my country more than you do, and I'm willing to kill you for it. All right, fine. I'll, <laughs> I'll go live in another country where nobody wants to kill me because I lived in another country. And, and going cultural-wise in Australia, the people, my God, I mean, yeah, there are assholes, but the people are so much more laid back when it comes to shit. People don't, you know, there's a lot of, I don't care about that, you know? What, for the most part, from what I've seen, what do Aussies care about? They want to, you know, go to work, get paid, and then surf on the weekends and afternoons. If there's good waves going on, they want to be able to go and enjoy. It. And if they can't, if they can't get out of work, they might chuck a sick. <laughs> um, I've run into so many Australians who want to talk politics with me. They all, every single one of them, always ask me, "What do you think of Trump?" And I don't hesitate to tell them, "I think he's a fucking idiot." And I think it was the reason. It's one of the uh, you know signs that America has really fallen on hard times that somebody like that could actually get elected. And they all kind of nod and everything, but one thing that I've never had happen when I talk politics with Australians, it's never turned into a fight. It's always a discussion. And I like that. I like being able to talk to people on hot topic, hot, uh, hot you know, button issues, and it remains civil, you know? Uh, oops, move the trash bin there. I think that's I think that's that's another issue, you know. Whereas Americans want to fight all the time, or at least the ones I grew up around and lived around, they want to fight all the time as opposed to discussing issues. Well, I'm entrenched in my ideology, and I'm not changing for anybody. Okay, then why are we talking about it? Because I'm an asshole and I want to fight. Well, I don't want to fight. There's, if you don't have anything, if, you know, a point to make, then, you know, why bother talking about it? It made family get-togethers and, you know, Thanksgiving and the holidays and everything very difficult. Because everybody wants to fight politics. I just want to eat turkey. You know, I'm not, I, I'm not even there to watch the football game, but I will. No, nope, we gotta talk shit about the president because he has a D after his name and not at all. And that's just that's just how I am. And I've, I've had my mind changed on a lot of subjects. I'm okay with I'm okay with change in my mind if you know you have a compelling point. If your if your argument is because I say so, oh sorry, that ain't good enough. For me. And I had a lot of people who that was it. Well, why do you believe that? Because I do. Um, I don't. I haven't been told. I haven't heard any other argument that makes more sense. Well, yeah, but that's just stupid. Okay, you say so. Here's my reason why I believe such a thing. 
Well, but that's just, that's just stupid. Why? Because it is. Well, great. I'm talking to a five-year-old. <laughs> I'm talking to a five-year-old who's already started bringing in his um, uh, his unemployment check. Or not unemployment, I'm sorry. Uh, Social Security checks. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, that, that kind of hurts. Like, like I said, I you know I was very excited for this adventure of me moving halfway around the world to another continent, another uh, another uh, hemisphere. My seasons are completely different. My moon is upside down. You know, people don't talk about that when you live in the southern hemisphere. The moon is upside down for me. Yeah, but yeah. No one's interested, no one cares. Yeah, family wise. People the people who should. And uh, it's it's disappointing. Because I'm the only one you know, me and one other are the only ones in the family who aren't Republican, born and bred and you know, bleed red. Well, Alright. Enjoy your life. I'll be at the beach. You're welcome to come if you can uh, if you can hang out and be civil, but you have to be a foreigner. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That one right there, that one right there, is the linchpin that really sticks in their craw. When someone starts talking about how they're uh, you know wanting to come for a visit or anything like that, it's like yeah, it's interesting uh, seeing the world through the eyes of a foreigner. And there's some of those, some of the people who are just so indoctrinated in that whole idea that, you know, foreigners are the evil, bad, horrible individuals. You know, no foreigners for me. This idea, suddenly, that they're in another country and they are the foreigner, it's, it's, it's like, it's like the brain, get, it's like, you, you can see the, the, uh, uh, the spanner stuck in, stuck in the gears. And it's like, yeah, yeah, when you leave your country, you're a foreigner. And then all of a sudden, they don't start talking about wanting to come for a visit. And I'm just like, come for a fucking visit, you idiot. Get your passport and come for a visit.
nobody sending me any pictures back to me, keeping me in the loop, letting me know. Shit, my brother got married. I have yet to see a photograph. Well, fine. All right. I mean, what what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to see that as? I don't know. I don't see it as a positive thing, though. <laughs> so it's like you know, my my brother and my mom uh, are a couple that you know try to keep tabs. Uh, I got an old coworker who does a better job at you know somebody who I met through work before I left and knew for probably two years. He does a great job keeping in touch with me. Uh, he just sent me a bunch of photographs that he took um, the other day of the, uh, the lunar eclipse. Um, and uh, something else. He just sent me a bunch of pictures today. Um, oh, there was a uh, thunderstorm and he was getting some great pictures of light. He's a great photographer. Uh, amateur right at the moment. I'd love to see him uh, get uh, professional, like a professional studio, because it's something he loves doing, and he's, he's good at it. But, uh, you know, he does a great job. He just sends me pics once in a while. He knows I'm not on any of the social media sites, so he just sends them through uh, chat. And, you know, he does a great job of that, better than anybody in my family who I've known my entire life. <laughs> it's like, you know, at some point it's like, I can take a hit, guys. I can take a hit. I'm not interested. I just stop posting stuff myself. Kind of a weird one-sided conversation here. <laughs> But that's the thing about this mowing, this mowing game. It's uh, one of those games that doesn't require a whole lot of thinking, so your brain can just go to different places. Uh, let's see, what do we got? In 30 minutes, we gotta get 99 points. I forgot that I have a new employee. I wonder how badly she's doing over on the other job site. If it's a, it was a bad job to select, but even if she gets 50% of the uh, the job money, uh, I'll be fine with it. It was like two thousand dollars. So many angles, sometimes I just want to cut off the edges here and make the path just a little bit straighter, a little bit more square. I should have started with this one. This is a pretty hefty chunk of the uh, job. Again, kind of just soften the corners.
We got it. Can we beat the can we beat the clock? We got 30. So we got two and a half minutes to get uh, seven percent. Oh, I mean six percent. <laughs> Bigger trees seem to have been a problem because they're kind of an awkward shape. Take a while, that didn't get me anywhere. <laughs>
Oh my god, it's going to take forever to get 0.3%. this I hate this part I'm trying to find these minuscule little blades of grass that I that all add up there's a big clump I'm so tired of it anymore I don't even care Still not up to point eight. took so much to get that percentage. that uh, when you're doing the edging that you could get uh, that you could get the uh, the grass vision permanently you know like just toggle it on and off you know I understand why you don't want it when it's on the uh, lawnmower but when you're doing this last little bit or like when it's the last like five percent uh, percent you know it's like trying to find just enough to get the job done. It's so annoying. Like, I just ran over that whole section, and I didn't get any of that.
Ugh. If this doesn't finish the job, then I don't know what's going to. Cutting complete for fuck's sake. Ugh. Took nine minutes of fucking edging. Ugh. So many fucking flowers cut down. <laughs> $28 of fines. But we still made more than... <laughs> well, we have $24, uh, $24 worth of flowers alone and $4 worth of collisions. Really? Four, uh, ground damage, four, four cents. Four dollars worth of damage for tapping the movable trash bins. Crazy. All right, so let's see how um, let's see how our. Um... Oh my God, she really didn't get fifty percent. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Oh, I'm definitely gonna have to get some training done there. Uh, let's see, how did she do? She did. She did not get the ground check time bonus. Ground check earnings. She, <laughs> she. It took her the entire time to find it. Cutting time didn't get anything there. Flowers destroyed twenty four. Collisions four dollars. Wow. <laughs> It was supposed to be $2,135. She got $1,085. Wow. <laughs> oh, there she is. Part of the team. All right. Let's uh, go to our employees, Margo Willis, and let's do some training. Uh, time management, advanced driving, or vehicle maintenance. Uh, let's start with time management. Oh, that's right. You can only do one training per day. All right. So maybe her time management will be a little better on the uh, next job. It's not like I did so well time management wise. <laughs> okay. Do we have any high dollar amounts? We have paddock A. That one takes a long time. So I might give that to her just for uh, some more practice. And then I'll do one of these uh, easier jobs just... Uh, just because. Uh, I'll do the King. Uh, let's see, Kingsbury House. I'll do the Kingsbury House. It's asking for a hundred and ten, but uh, mine has what is it? Oops. Uh, 132. So it might might be just a little on the big side. Oh my God! I'm hearing I'm hearing the TV out in the living room, and it's running nonstop political ads. Uh, we have uh, some elections coming up here in uh, Australia, and um, I think it's this weekend. Uh, let me let me let me tell, point this out because I didn't know this before um, before we started moving back. Uh, if you were an Australian citizen, uh, voting is mandatory. Yeah, you you have to vote. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but you have to vote. But I will give the Aussies one thing. When they have polling locations, they usually have somebody running a barbecue for, like, uh, fundraising efforts. And they're usually selling, like, uh, dollar sausages on a bun. And I'm like, I can get behind that. Why can't we do that in America? <laughs> what do they call it? They call it the, um, uh, I think, is it the Freedom Sausage? There's a name that they have for it. It's it, because it's so common for uh, groups to sell um, sausages, and it's usually for like school groups or uh, you know local fundraising and stuff like that, youth groups and things. Uh, so people buy them. And they're cheap, and uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I I totally can get behind that. 
I was like, when, every time I've gone to a polling location, I would be thrilled to walk out the exit and there'd be some guy selling, you know, dollar sausages or, you know, dollar Polish sausages on a bun. I'd be like, yeah, give me five of them. I've got a long hike back to the, back to my job. <laughs> okay, so let's give her the uh, expensive or the really big one. That way she's at least bringing in a decent amount of money. Even if she only gets 50%, it's still more than she would be getting 50% of these other jobs. You know, like 50% of this was at uh, 700 and some. Not quite 700, but that's still more than she would make in any of these other jobs once they cut it by 50%. I just have to get her trained to the point that she's starting to actually get some money. Um, and, uh, you know, she, her time management's well. She's not putting so much damage on the machines. Um, and, um, uh, and, and driving. It's, it's funny that as much as there is involved with this game, you know, you think you just go out and mow. No, 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 no. You have to train your employees. So um, this might be my last job uh, for, the, uh, for the evening. But yeah, there's this political ad that keeps doing the, um, they, they do the song, uh, there's a hole in the, uh, there's a hole in my bucket, but they do their own lyrics, and uh, boy, it's just annoying. And it's like, it plays like every third commercial, it's so damn annoying. So I'm, I'm hearing that through my headphones from the other room. <laughs> Not, not to say that uh, my wife's got the TV too loud or anything. It's just I'm picking it up because you know that's how that's just how my uh, my uh, hearing is, and it's it's my brain's making a bigger deal of it because it's something that I find so annoying. Where is all the stuff? Oh, there's one. Take a step back. There, my God, how did I miss those the first time I ran through? Yeah. So what's the time expected? 28 minutes. Uh, we have a five. There we go. And what are we shooting for? 99.5. Well, we're, we're using a much bigger mower than is uh, suggested, so we ought to be able to tear through this one pretty quick. Hopefully not too quick to run over flowers. Let's try to make up, make up some uh, money that we lost on that last job from all the flowers being destroyed.
laser damage the ability to... Oh, I haven't been fixing my machine. Uh, I don't think I've ever run into that problem. I'm usually... I was... I was so concerned with getting my employee trained, I forgot to uh, take care of my uh, equipment in the shop. Like I said, <laughs> you think it's just going to be mowing the grass, but there's a lot more to it. Jesus, the plate condition's down to 50%. Hurry up and get this job done, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we don't get too many penalties for that. I've never really had that happen. I picked a uh, small job, so we'll be back to the shop pretty quickly. We're already a uh, third of third done with this one, and uh, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, we're definitely get a time bonus for this one. it's enough to take care of any uh, penalties. We've got the one flower so far. Oh my god! It... Oh, this could be bad. I didn't realize it was leaving the grass like that. Might have to mow some section the second time or something. I don't know. Like I said, I've never I've never been to where the uh, blades have been damaged. while I'm here. Okay, I can't change cutting blades. 50 bucks. Oh boy. I've never had to do that before. Hopefully, whatever we've lost that happened before. Preventative maintenance I've always I've always done and I just have I've forgotten to do this round.
what happens at the end of this. I have to remember that I just spent 50 bucks on a brand new plate. <laughs> I guess that's the penalty for uh, having to do an on-site job instead of doing it at the shop. Okay, let's see what the damage was. Yikes. Regardless, I've got to remember, fix the mowers. All right, we were supposed to get 350, and we got 350 and six cents. <laughs> Vehicle maintenance. Okay, it did add it to it. Okay. <laughs> Dang. If we hadn't done that vehicle maintenance, we would have had 400 bucks. Well, dang. 
because the uh, time bonus 2671 ground check uh, bonus 510 and then the ground check earnings 20 Wow all right let's see how let's see how the new hire did yep 50 percent <laughs> or more or less oh boy look at the damage that she did to the vehicle vehicle engine blades feet. my god oh boy weekly report Ugh. Uh, but we're we we've ranked up with uh, our um, our reputation. All right. Okay. Let's get to doing some maintenance. My God, this is gonna. All right. Nine fifty six. Three oh five. Fifty nine cents. Well, of course, it's a brand new fucking blade. Eight fifty two. Eight Eighty-nine seventy-one. What the hell is she doing to my mowers? Thirty-three fifty-five. Twenty-three seventy-two. No, she's not doing the gas. And empty the grass collector. Oh boy. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, go in, Margo, and let's train again. Uh, time management, driving vehicle maintenance. Mm. Let's do advanced drive. Uh, let's see, time management, advanced. Let's do advanced driving. Maybe that'll get her through a job quicker. All right. Let's take a look at what jobs we have. Do we have any hefty jobs? Nope. They're all little jobs. Hmm. Well, what the heck? Let's give her the most expensive one. And I will take 305. I'll take the garden because that doesn't take any time whatsoever. Whoops. Okay, Tzilla88, thank you so much for the follow. And R Signs, hello! Uh, you've missed out on an interesting uh, little broadcast. I've uh, gotten my first employee, and this will be her third job. Actually, assigning her now. She's not doing very well at all. Usually, what the contract says, she gets about 50% of. So, <laughs> But I have to uh, train her to become a better employee. I was just about to do another job. But what I'm doing is I'm giving her the really expensive jobs that take forever for me to do. And I'm like, I'd rather get 50, if she's going to do 50%, I might as well give her the $2,000 job. Because <laughs> that's a lot better than 50% of a $400 job. But, uh, eh, that's part of the management. She's uh, she's an apprentice, and I've got to get her leveled up. Uh, that's, uh, that's her. Margo Willis. Uh, I had a couple of apprentices that were um, uh, ready to get started and uh, because of hers loves watching old monster movies watches an 80s action film every night uh, the other guy literally in his description said he does not know a single Pokemon and I'm like nope I can't have you on staff like that that's just sloppy <laughs> okay so uh, I'll be doing the <laughs> I'll be doing the garden which is not the most expensive, but um, I'm giving her the most expensive just to get some time out there. So, yeah, it's kind of funny some of the um, some of the things that you'll see in the uh, characters. Uh... Hey, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. <laughs> What's uh? What's your preferred uh, usage? Is it uh, is it smoking or edibles? I am not. I'm not going to say I've never done, but I um, I've only I've only experienced once. Um, 
unfortunately where I'm at right now, it's still not legal. Um, but I'm in favor of legalization. I see. I'm in favor. I'm, I'm totally in favor of it. I really wish that where I was living back in the States, it was uh, legal. Uh, would have probably gone a long way to help out the uh, panic stress attacks that I was having. I was having a rough time with uh, a lot of stuff. And um, I, I, I feel like it probably could have been uh, something that could have assisted. But I don't, I don't know. I just would have liked to have had the opportunity to find out. Alright, there's one, there's two, three, and four. <laughs> I believe it would have. I really do. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm one of those persons who I was never in favor of it for the longest time for personal use, but I was definitely in favor of, you know, if someone else wants to, uh, let them. Let them do it legally. Okay, we need six to seven. Seven centimeters. All right. Try not to get any collisions up against the uh, brick wall. But even if it's not for medicinal use, I think it should totally be recreational too. I don't think you should have to get a uh, prescription for it. I think it should be just the same as going into a liquor store. Yeah, if I can go in and buy something that's going to kill my kidneys and liver, I should be able to do the same damn thing for uh, edibles and, and smokables. I'm more in favor of like the edibles and everything, but I would rather have a dispensary that has to follow federal guidelines so that they're safe. Exactly, B21. Or if you're in Australia, 18. <laughs> Because that's the legal drinking age. Let me tell you, I can't get used to the idea that 18-year-olds can go into a liquor store and buy alcohol. <laughs> they have the signage. If you weren't bo if you weren't 18 as of today, you ain't buying today. And I'm like, I'm so used to the 21. <laughs> They upped the smoking age. I didn't know that. When did that happen? Was that like in the last couple of years? I mean, I wasn't a smoker, so maybe I didn't pay attention to it. But when did that happen? Last year? Okay, then I missed that. Is that... Um, was that uh, for the entire country, or is that state by state? I mean, basically, did they nationwide? So they—that's a federal law. Wow, I didn't know that. I hadn't—I hadn't heard anything about that. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'll just say this much. I think it's I think it's fucking stupid in the states that you can go off and fight uh, in a uh, in a war that someone else started at 18, but you can't you can't get a beer. I think that's the dumbest fucking shit. That was the argument. Now you can't get a beer and you can't smoke. You know what? Then let's up the legal enlistment age to 21 too. If you ain't an adult, then I guess you ain't a fucking adult. Shit, I think the last threshold I remember crossing was being old enough to uh, rent a car. I think that was like 25? I don't even remember. I think it's, yeah, I think it's, uh, you, they don't want, uh, most places won't let you rent a uh, car unless you're 25. Yeah, so that was like the last major milestone I hit, and I used it too. <laughs> When I'd go on vacation, I would buy, I would rent a car that was better than the piece of shit that I was driving. Put mileage on that instead of uh, burning through my engine.
after that, I guess I really haven't been paying attention to how old you got to be because the next one I have is collecting Social Security and shit. I'm in another country, so I don't even know how that works over uh, with with my uh, account back in the States. I probably should look that up at some point in the next, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, I used to uh, go on uh, these uh, kayak trips with my family, and uh, it was a great area, but it was an eight-hour drive uh, by uh, interstate to get there. So I was like, yeah, I'm not putting, I'm not driving my car in, in this. Uh, I'm going to put the mileage on someone else. Yeah, <laughs> it was eight hours to get there, and then we spent two days uh, drifting down the river. And two separate days, I should say. We would get up, get on the river in the morning, and be on the river all day long until the until the you know before the sun set. We'd get off the river, go back to the hotel, and just start drinking. Well, drink more. <laughs> Uh, I, I love the kayaking. I, I've got some great rivers and uh, ocean kayaking spots that I need to get to. I just haven't gotten my kayak here in Australia. There's there's some great gentle river uh, touring areas and everything, and I'm I'm all about it. I just uh, I don't really have a vehicle big enough to uh, transport. But there are some uh, kayak rental places. There was one that I saw before I moved to the area that I'm at when I was still living in uh, Sydney. Uh, they had some Sydney Harbor uh, morning kayaks. You, they'd give you a carafe. Whoops. They'd give you a carafe full of coffee, and that you just go out and and paddle around Sydney Harbor before the boats came in uh, during the morning and watch the sunrise. And I'm just like, oh, that sounds so fucking awesome. Um, I just, I didn't get a chance to do it, but it is something that I'm still wanting to do. But uh, the other, uh, yesterday when I was talking about fishing and everything, <laughs> I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to uh, fishing from the kayak. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> Okay, what am I missing? There is... Oh, there's a plot over here. But yeah, when I... Uh, this was all before... When we moved, it was right before COVID really hit. But uh, when I saw that there was a, uh, a morning tour... Uh, and, and what it was was they just gave you the boat and you just headed out and, and uh, did it on your own. And, you know, you had a set amount of time that you had before you had to come back in. But it was like, I think, two hours. And I was like, at, the po at that point, you know. And Sydney Harbor is not a stranger to seeing uh, dolphins coming in. So I was like, yeah, that could be a lot of fun. So that's definitely something, and if I do, <laughs> hopefully I'll have like a GoPro so I can uh, strap it to the uh, boat. Alright, what am I missing? Oh, I'm actually missing quite a bit in this whole corner here. I have seen a few of them uh, in some of the areas that we go. There was uh, there's this one little area that I like going for when, when I'm having like lunch or, or uh, early dinner before the sun has set. Um, there, it's a great surfing spot. There's a lot of uh, rocks. Uh, it's, it's not a beachy area, but I mean, it's, it's got rocks against the water and everything. And uh, there's a lot of surfing that takes place because there's some great waves. And every once in a while, if you're lucky, you can see uh, the dolphins. Holy shit, we did this in eight minutes and it was 19. Wow, we're going to get a time bonus for sure. 
Um, but when the, the surfers were, uh, uh, you know, doing their thing, you could see the uh, dolphins swimming through the waves and every once in a while pop up and, like, dive through. And it was really neat seeing that. Because we were sitting in the car park overlooking the water, but you, it, there was no question that they were dolphins. They were, that, they were close enough to see and identify. So it, that was a lot of fun to see that. I would love to see that. But there's some, there are some rivers that, like, uh, where I'm at, it's the river systems that, like, exit into the ocean. And I would love to go paddling on those. Yeah, when you when you see them playing games, one of the things I thought was kind of neat was I was watching a video where the dolphins were blowing uh, bubble rings and messing with the jellyfish, and I was just like, "You smart motherfuckers!" <laughs> okay, oh wow, we got a forty-five dollar bonus, so that takes care of the blade that we had to <laughs> fucking uh, take care of in the last mowing session. Uh, you missed on the last mowing session. I had forgotten to do vehicle maintenance on my uh, mowers, and the mower got so beat up, the blade needed to be replaced because I was leaving grass clippings, or I was leaving grass all over the place. I was not mowing very well. <laughs> okay, so I got uh, uh, $45, so that takes care of... Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, getting getting high off of that puffer fish. <laughs> Well, they can't go into the forest and eat the mushrooms, for God's sake. What are they supposed to do? <laughs> Getting high off of some puffer fish. Getting high off of fugu. <laughs> All right, how did she do? Okay, she was supposed to get 405. She got 212. <laughs> oh, my God. And look at all the damage she did to that mower. Oh, my God. That's so terrible. All right, let's go into our garage and fix everything. All right, and now look at the difference in the maintenance and everything that I have to do. 84 cents, 397, 41 cents. All right, now let's take a look at her mess. 4619, 1609, 1190, $1.64. At least she's conservative with gas. <sighs> Boy. Oops. Okay. <laughs> we'll allow that. <laughs> um, that is, uh, yeah, that is, um, Oh, I have to, and now, and now, now that all of my uh, equipment has been maintained, hey, we're up to $3,000, so we're doing okay. So we've at least got enough of a bankroll because I, uh, she, her salary is $250 a week. Um, so let's go to our employee. Now we have to, uh, we have to do our next training session. Um, we better do vehicle maintenance. That's expensive, but she's really costing me a lot. Yeah, fire her. <laughs> Um, let's see. So I can give her time management. Uh, let's do vehicle maintenance level one. Uh, okay. So they can only get one training. Go to the Home Depot. <laughs> Senor, andale, andale. <laughs> Todos están aquí? <laughs> Absolutely. I oh, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Let's let's take a look at. Uh, let's back out of this and. Um, oh, I I can dismiss her. I can't fire her, but I can dismiss her. Uh, let's take a look at. Um, let's see. Can I see? Oh no no I can't. Oh there we go there we go. I wanted to see the other applicants. Uh, so let's see, we have Elsie Ross, Samuel Bolton, Albert Howell, Ivy Thompson, and Zara Griffin. Zara Griffin is the new one, but see, Zara Griffin is professional level. <laughs> you know, I didn't even think about that, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I love the, uh, the, um, the uh, profiles for Zara Griffin. 
has a candlelit bath every Sunday, always looks on the bright side of life, hates TV talent shows, wants to live in a city under the sea. Hey, that sounds, that sounds great. Uh, Ivy Thompson, likes their eggs scrambled, has to be home by midnight, dreads going to work every Monday, doesn't know what a Pokemon is. Can't hire you, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Albert Howell watches real crime TV shows all the time, watches an 80s action film every night, hates TV talent shows, has been in space. Not a great uh, retirement plan there if you're doing uh, lawn jobs. <laughs> so yeah, Samuel Bolton was actually the other guy that I was going to hire because um, I just wanted to hire an apprentice and kind of level them up. <laughs> right, he's been to space. Yeah, he's been to Mars, dude. <laughs> What's this strange pill? It's a cheeseburger, man. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's, yeah, okay, so we've got the uh, training session. <laughs> uh, let's see what jobs we have. Do we have any really expensive? Well, we have a 615 one. So if she does that, then she'll drop it down to about, uh, you know, 300 and some. But the next highest one that she can do is 300, so I might as well give her that job. Okay, and I will do the next highest, 325. Oh, it's the garden again. Okay, yeah, we'll just do that. Oh, good, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I was, um, I was wondering about that. Um, so, uh, hopefully, laughter was the best medicine in that situation. <laughs> All right, so I will select here. I will take my big old mower and my big old trimmer, and let's start the day. Good, good. That makes me that makes me very happy to know that. I'm I'm glad that you're feeling much better. I I figured you probably were feeling better since you said you had gone to work. So yeah, I actually have to go to work tomorrow, and it's actually a kind of a weird day. Um, where I'm at, it's uh, it's a very short drive from where I work, but uh, unfortunately tomorrow my wife has to go into one of her uh, practicals. For her uh, on for her uh, uh, courses and everything, and we only have the one car, so she has to drive and leave early. So I, <laughs> I've just said, just drop me off at the train station. I'll take a train in, and the train takes a long time to get there. <laughs> and then when I get there, it's still going to be very early, so I'm going to have to figure something out. So I might just hit up a cafe or something, and just I don't know, maybe bring a book and, and do some reading. All right, let's pick up some. Oh, there's a frisbee. I don't know what that was, but it was purple. Oh. Oh, there's five objects. Wow, okay. Oh. A tennis ball. And Jesus Christ, fucking murder weapon. You know, I really like the public transportation, but where... Uh, I was actually talking about this earlier, uh, the public transportation. I really like it in the city of Sydney. Uh, there's a lot of stops, there's a lot of lines, and it's a lot of fun. I think it's a lot of fun. As someone who never did public transportation, I think it's a lot of fun once you learn how to, you know, read the system and, you know, jump on train to train to train to get anywhere that you need to go. Because all the shopping districts are right near a train station. They, they planned it out very well. But where I'm at, I'm not in Sydney anymore, so the trains are not quite as, not quite as good. They, they don't run as often, They're, uh, and there's a lot fewer stops. And, and I'm, I'm kind of not in the countryside, but I'm in kind of the small outskirts areas uh, from, from Sydney. I'm actually a couple of hours outside of the city uh, by train. So um, it's, it's a little hectic trying to find my way around. That's why I'm trying to uh, trying to find a car for myself so I can have that. And, you know, then, then the wife can go do her thing and then I can do my thing and, and we don't have to worry about our schedules matching up and everything. But, you know, some days where it's like if I take public transportation, that's one thing. But other days, I'd rather just take the car. <laughs> sort of a thing. All right. 
So let's hurry up and do this job again and try to get ourselves a, a nice little bonus. Alright, what's the cutting height? Uh, six to seven. Well, we can do it at seven. I always try to set it at its highest acceptable point. It's amazing I have to mow this yard twice in, uh, in two days in a row, basically. Hey, no problem, man. Uh, if you just uh, just stopping by or whatever, I appreciate that. If uh, you're done, no problem. I was actually getting pretty close to shutting down myself, so uh, if uh, that's all, then hey, no worries. Uh, still gotta still gotta get that um, sickness uh, completely in check. I don't want you to. Uh, ruin that and uh, make yourself worse. So yeah, if you're cutting out, no problem. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I probably will be, but I guess it all depends on how good my shift of work goes tomorrow. Most likely yes, but I always leave that little room on uh, days that I'm working that uh, I might be out. <laughs> but there's a pretty good chance. So, anyway, get some sleep, sleep off that hangover or whatever the hell you got, <laughs> and uh, keep getting on the men. And uh, we'll we'll catch you we'll catch you next time, whether that be tomorrow or Friday. If I don't broadcast tomorrow, I definitely will on Friday. No matter what, I probably will on Friday. <laughs> I don't need luck, man. I got skill. He says as he runs over a flower. <laughs> All right, take it easy, our signs. We'll catch you next time. So now all I'm thinking about is kayaking. <laughs> kayaking is definitely something I need to get back into. It was just too damn much fun. Most of what uh, my family trips were was just float trips. We get on the river. We uh, we went to this little area that uh, had like horseback riding and kayak trails, or uh, horseback trails and kayaking uh, businesses. It was a place that basically shut down when the summertime ended. It was a it was a place that it was a little small town that thrived on tourism, uh, but only seasonal tourism. Uh, the people who worked at the uh, hotel that we stayed at were super nice people, really great. It was a family-owned business, and uh, but they always booked up real early. So my mom, she would kind of take care of everything. She would uh, book a bunch of hotels in uh, January to go out in July, and we'd always take like the last weekend. And um, they were really, really a nice really nice family that uh, owned that uh, business. They were uh, very accommodating. It was nothing fancy. It was just literally a place to sleep after we spent the day on the river. But uh, I loved it. It was great. It was a bit, it was an inexpensive trip. You know, we'd have uh, kayak rental fees, uh, hotel fees, and you know, whatever gas and transportation we used to get there. Because it was an eight-hour drive, but we would leave like Friday morning. Uh, before the sun got up, and we drive all, uh, we drive eight hours, stopping and you know picking up snacks and lunch on the way, and then we get there uh, in time for check-in, get into the hotel, and then we'd usually go down to the river and do some swimming because the hotel was just a short walk from the main river system. There was a bunch of rivers in this area, and uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous, spring-fed water, crystal clear. Just beautiful, beautiful water. And uh, yeah, so so then it was like that Friday we we do some swimming in the uh, local uh, swimming hole, and then uh, we would um, we would go back to the hotel and just kind of hang out, have dinner, uh, do a little bit of uh, drinking, and then we would get up the next morning. The kayak company would drive to the hotel, pick us up with all the equipment in their uh, trailer and uh, drive us to the launch point. 
and then all day long uh, they would have uh, buses picking people up and pick, pe picking people and equipment up um, at the uh, at the designated pickup point, and it was a very well run organization. And that's just that's just how the entire that so then we would uh, you know we and, and, and there was no time frame it wasn't like you know it was just however fast it took you to uh, get down the river if you wanted to take all day to do it I mean there was a final call sort of a thing but if you if it took you all day to get down the river then it took you all day to get down the river it's very low pressure sort of a situation and and I really like that. Just take it at your own pace, whatever that pace is. And so what we would do is we would take all day to get down the river. We would uh, we just paddle for a while, find a nice little spot to uh, stop, and we just get out of the boats, do some swimming, sit down, you know, gather some rocks, uh, take some photographs and stuff. You know, just whatever, just take a break. And, uh, and then when it came time for lunch, when everybody started getting hungry, we had sandwiches packed in and everything. Um, they would uh, one of the uh, one of the gas stations would make sandwiches and they'd pack them all up and everything. You just throw them in your cooler, watertight and everything, so that the the ice wouldn't get into it. And it's just a very well well run organization. And I really liked it. Um, so we just stopped. We'd have some lunch middle of the day. You know, jump in the water, do some swimming. It's just every time you stopped, you just find a little p appropriate place to do some swimming because that water was just, it was ice cold, but it was crystal clear. You could see all the way down to the bottom, except for the places that were so deep that the sun wouldn't reach. And there were some deep, damn parts of that river. Okay, so we ended up with almost $50 in bonuses. It probably would have been if we hadn't had uh, two dollars worth of <laughs> two dollars worth of penalties. But let's see how uh, Margot did. Hey, look at that! Look at that! She actually did uh, pretty close, much better than fifty percent. She was supposed to get five hundred ninety-five, and she got four hundred thirty, becoming a better employee with all the training. Very nice. Uh, the maintenance, the vehicle maintenance and everything is not quite as bad. So, all right. Oh, we've repaid some of our loan. Or some of my loan, I should say. All right, so let's go in and do some more training. Uh, let's see. Vehicle maintenance. Now it's 1,000. Advanced driving, uh, 300. Uh, time management. Uh, let's do adv mm, Let's see. Let's do time management. Uh, see what happens if she gets a little bit quicker. All right, we'll do that bit of training there. Uh, oh, and let's do some maintenance. And then once I get done with the maintenance, I'm basically going to call it uh, for this evening. So uh, let's see. 354, 387, 36. This thing just sips gasoline. Oh, I'm sorry, petrol. Ugh, it's still costing, but at least it's getting less expensive. Thirty-two fifty-seven. There goes all my bonus. Eleven fifty, seven fifteen, a dollar eighteen. Wow, crazy. Uh, let's see. Can I? Well, I can get a better mower. Let's see. Was this eighty-four? That'll still leave me with thirteen hundred. Hmm. Nah, I think I will wait until I can get one of these again uh, for uh, for my new employee because that's one hundred and twenty-two. That's a much better step up, and and we're actually making money pretty well. Okay, let's take a look at just what the jobs are that'll be for uh, probably tomorrow. Orchard, that's a tough job. <laughs> but now that now that she's uh, getting to the point where she's doing better than 50% of the contract, that actually could end up being about $700 still. So, yeah. Alrighty. Well, that is going to do that.
for another broadcast. Let me switch over to the other camera so you all can see my gorgeous face. Uh, first thing first, I want to uh, give a shout out to my latest subscriber, Tzilla88. Thank you for following. Hopefully we get a chance to chat with you at some point. Um, if you are watching at this moment, uh, just know that um, the uh, I, I do apologize for that 10-minute buffer zone that you had to wait once you subscribed to be able to chat. I, I have to keep it that way to keep the um, uh, scammers and uh, uh, ads away there's so many people that just they were just popping in dropping in their message and then fleeing and not even giving me any time and i was like nah i gotta do something and then i saw that that was an option so uh it's the 10 minutes i think that's the lowest that i can set it but what that does is that keeps people from subscribing making a message and then going so there's just a little little bit of that because i was having that it's like yeah it's nice having the subscribers but then they just leave a message and i never see them again uh, big shout out to uh, my returning customers, R Signs ninety and zero two zero three Brett. Thank you for hanging out and uh, chatting with me, even if it's just for a short amount of time. It's always nice uh, having uh, people to chat with, but I get it. Sometimes people are just you know just want to watch the show. Uh, so that will do it for uh, another broadcast. Uh, like I was telling uh, R Signs, um, I do have to work tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a weird day, so I don't know if I'm going to be broadcasting uh, tomorrow. More like, more than likely, yes, because this is pretty simple. Uh, just sitting down and mowing um, after a, uh, even if it's a rough day at work, but uh, it's getting better. There's at least that. Every time I go in, it feels a little better. Uh, my muscles are kind of getting used to the work. Uh, it is a physical labor job, but it's not like heavy physical labor, and uh, I'm just super out of shape. I'm just a big, fat fatty, <laughs> and I ended up um, getting a lot fat fattier during uh, lockdowns and COVIDs and being unemployed and working on other projects and everything. So yeah, uh, it, it's 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 good for me, and I get paid for uh, paid to do it. So. Uh, last time I actually had a shift, uh, I had a shift a couple of days ago, uh, it was uh, a lot of fun. I actually ran into, uh, I'm meeting uh, more and more employees, and uh, actually ran into the first employee that was a lot of fun to work with. So uh, hopefully I'm kind of getting to that point where uh, people are realizing, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the work and whatever. Hopefully there's no office politics and everything. I don't think there should be, but... Uh, I'm, I'm too old to compete with that shit. Just let me go in, do the work. If you don't want to chat and have fun, that's fine. Let's just do the work and go home. <laughs> all right. So that will do it for uh, another day of lawn mowing. So until I greet you all again, you all have a great rest of the day, and uh, we will catch you next time.